So welcome back everyone, Mike here. As most of you know, I have been waiting for a new Ford Bronco for the longest time. Well today, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is we have a new Bronco to drive. The bad news is this one's not mine. This one is a loaner from Barrel Ford in Zillianople, Pennsylvania. That's who my dealer is, and they were kind enough to lend me this one until ours finally shows up. Now, so far, I've only driven this Bronco a total of about 30 miles so far, but I've already picked up on some key differences between this and our Wrangler. Now, first of all, if you're not familiar with the Bronco, there are seven different trim levels. They start with the base, big bend, black diamond, outer banks, badlands, wild track, and first edition. The one you're looking at right now is an outer banks. What I'd like to do in today's video is go over some of the features of this Bronco right here, and then we're gonna get into the differences, both good and bad, comparing this Bronco to our Wrangler that we have at home. If you're thinking about ordering a new Bronco, I have one recommendation for you and also something to consider. My recommendation is this, definitely do your homework because not only are there seven different trim levels, well actually six now because the first edition is no longer available. Along with all that, you've also got two door versus four door, hard top versus soft top. Plus there are tons of options and accessories that you can choose so you can kind of customize it to exactly what you want. So definitely do your research. And the other thing is, I hope you're not in a big hurry because if you order one today, it's gonna to take you a very, very long time to get your Bronco. Now this Bronco here is an Outer Banks two door with the hard top. Now what I have on order and what I'm waiting for is a four door wild track with the hard top. So as far as, you know, Jeep versus Bronco, I would say the Outer Banks best aligns with the uh, Jeep Wrangler Sahara. This one is in carbonized gray, that's the color. I actually kind of like it. You know, when you look at this, it kind of reminds me of like the uh, Land Rover Defender, and that may just be, you know, the boxiness of it and the color, but it does kind of remind you of the uh, Land Rover Defender. The interior, very nice. It's got leather. And when I get home, I need to give you a, a better view of this screen. It's a uh, really, really nice 12-inch screen in here. It's laid out well. Now, this one has the four-cylinder. It's a 2.3 liter, and it's got plenty of power. It really does. I was actually surprised at uh, how quickly it accelerates. Not a lot of room in the back seat but you wouldn't really expect much in a two-door. Hard top is removable, very similar to our Jeep. Uh, you can take these two panels out very easily, and then you can take the whole top off the uh, back as well if you'd like. Looks to be just about three bolts on each side, maybe four bolts on each side, and you can pop that top right off. The Outer Banks has six GOAT modes, which stands for goes over all terrain, not greatest of all time. You've got normal, eco, sport mode, which actually really works. I tried that last night. Uh, changes all your shift points. After sport mode, you've got slippery. You can see it shifted into four-wheel drive. Mud and ruts. and sand. Those are the six goat modes 
that come with the Outer Banks trim level. Now this Outer Banks has a huge 12 inch screen and it's very user friendly. I just started driving this vehicle yesterday afternoon. I haven't spent a lot of time with it, uh, but you can go phone, you know, your navigation, all your apps, settings, features. Down here, these controls are really well laid out. This has the uh, 360 camera. You can see all around it. I do like the uh, climate control for driver and passenger, and I like that it shows the temperature right on the knob. Very nice. Your fan controls right here, up, down. That's all there is to that. Max AC, pretty nice. So as I said, this has the uh, four-cylinder, 2.3-liter turbo, puts out 300 horsepower, 325 pound-feet of torque. Compare that to our Jeep Wrangler, it's a four-cylinder as well, two-liter. Now it's at 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, so advantage Bronco. Now a couple things that I like about the Bronco versus the Jeep, I like the fact that the uh, mirrors stay on the Bronco. On the Jeep, the mirrors come off when you take the doors off. As you probably know with the Jeep, the hinges are on the outside and you know by law you have to have mirrors on your vehicle. So if you take the doors off the Jeep, you've got to get these mirrors and uh, I've got a set. You can stick them right in the hinges. Not a big deal, but I like the fact that the mirrors stay on the Bronco versus uh, coming off with the doors on the Jeep. Now speaking of doors, and boy that's a pretty nice reflection by the way. I kind of have mixed feelings on this, but I do think I like the frameless door that the Bronco has compared to the Jeep. And when I say frameless, you know, the Jeep has a frame that goes all the way around the window. When you remove the doors, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot harder to store. You know, on the Bronco, you can store the doors in the back. One disadvantage to this, and I shouldn't really say it's a disadvantage because I never had problems with it before. Uh, Melissa used to have a little Volkswagen EOS convertible and it had a frameless door as well. But when you go to open the door, you'll watch that window, it kind of pops down a little bit, and you know, there's nothing supporting it, and when you close it, it goes back up. I don't know how I feel about that, I really don't. I think I like the fact that it is frameless just for the storage of the doors, but maybe over time, you know, I can't say for sure, you might have a problem with that. I don't know. Personal preference, I guess. Now, one advantage that our Jeep has over the Bronco is the hardtop roof and wind noise, or should I say lack of wind noise on the Jeep. On this Bronco, when you're traveling about 55, 60 miles an hour, there is some noticeable wind noise inside. You know, there's no draft or anything like that, but this one is definitely a little bit louder than the hardtop roof on the Jeep. Now, keep in mind, you know, there is nothing aerodynamic about these vehicles at all, this or the Jeep. You know, a bunch of big flat panels, flat windshield, the roof comes off, all that kind of stuff. So you're not buying it for your aerodynamics. That's just something to keep in mind. The hardtop roof on this is a little bit louder than the Jeep. Now, this Outer Banks, it has 18-inch wheels and 255-70 R18 tires. Now, the Wild Track that we have ordered, uh, you're going to notice a big difference whenever we get it. Uh, it's going to come with 35 inch tires, which come with the uh, Sasquatch package, and it's got a lot of suspension upgrades as well. A few minor things that are really no big deal on the uh, Bronco there's no fuel cap, it's got the Easy Fuel. Jeep's got a fuel cap, no big deal, like I said. Now, this uh, Outer Banks, it comes standard with the LED headlights and taillights. And something else worth a mention, and I should have done a little more research on this. You may have to. The front bumper on the Bronco is steel. The front bumper on our Rubicon was plastic, and I replaced it with a nice Weston bumper. Now, this is probably an option. I'm not 100% sure, and I don't know if you can order the Rubicon with a steel bumper or not. Just something to keep in mind and uh, something to do your homework on. But I definitely like this bumper much better than the bumper that came on the Rubicon. If you are curious about this, these are tie downs, says max load, 150 pounds. This one has a roof rack on, so if you've got a canoe or a kayak or something on the top, you can use these to tie down to, which is pretty nice. 
Take a look in the back here. Uh, this being the two door, there's really not much room back here. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a Bronco. Uh, for us, we definitely wanted the four door, uh, but these seats do fold down. Not a lot of room in the back seat, which I didn't really expect that as well. This would be a great little off-roader here though, right here, this short wheelbase. This would be a great vehicle to take off-road for sure. It's got the uh, rear defroster in the window here. Now the back door on these, these are something that you uh, want to take a good look at. This one appears to be pretty heavy duty on it here. Our Jeep, you know, the last Jeep we had, uh, we put 35 inch tires on it. And you have that hanging off the back door, it's a lot of weight. And on our Jeep, we had a few little hairline cracks in here. So I ended up on our new Jeep, I put a bumper on it, and it's got a mount that all the weight from the uh, spare tire goes to the bumper. But these are pretty heavy duty steel hinges right here. You know, time will tell, but it appears to be, uh, appears to be pretty nice. Alright, we're back on the road, we're going to head back to the house and get uh, Melissa's take on this Bronco from a woman's perspective. Uh, but one of the most surprising things about this one right here to me is the amount of power that this 2.3 liter turbo engine has. Plenty of acceleration. Uh, I ordered the 2.7 in hours just because I didn't think the 2.3 would be adequate and I think I was wrong about that. This has plenty of power. Something else noticeable difference between the Bronco and the Jeep. Uh, this Bronco has a much better quality ride on the road. Now keep in mind the Bronco has an independent front suspension whereas the Jeep has a solid front axle uh, but this definitely rides better than our Jeep does even before we had ours lifted and you don't have any of that squirreliness in the steering that uh, Jeeps are known for as well. Definitely better ride in the Bronco. Yeah. That is really cool. Like I say, with the coilovers in the back, the struts in the back, the struts in the front, simple, you know, putting Fox coilovers on it. Yeah. I mean, that'd be some nice, nice suspension. Yeah, very cool. So I just stopped by uh, Meridian Off-Road. You probably remember Rob. Rob and, and Dan did the uh, lift on our Rubicon, but you hadn't seen a Bronco yet, right? One hasn't showed up yet? First one that came in, yeah. And I laughed when I pulled in here because most people want to look in the inside. These guys both went underneath of it to see what's underneath. <laughs> what, what? Give me your honest opinion on what you guys think so far. Yeah, so looking at it, um, it, it looks like it's very customizable, which I'm sure was their intention. Um, what's nice is uh, the rear is a strut uh, system, so it's like basically a coilover shock. So it's going to be super simple for companies like Fox and BDS, I think they've already come out with a kit, uh, to come up with Fox coilover. So they really did their, their, their homework on this, and um, I think this thing is going to be awesome. I mean, it's really? drive shafts are tucked up nice and high, got a lot of clearance underneath. Um, it, it, and it's very customizable. There's a lot of room in the front IFS. It really kind of, uh, they modeled that after the wrap. Okay. So I, I think that's going to really, really be nice. What do you think, Dan? It looks like there's a lot of room to work, like what he was saying. Yeah. When you're trying to take the front strut out and stuff, there's not all these wires and stuff in the way. It's really easy to work on. Yeah. But that with like the uh, fender flares that we were talking about, they're like quick disconnect, you know, fender flares and right uh, all the accessory points you know even inside for grab handles and things like that yeah i, I think they definitely are kind of going for the throat of jeep with it yeah sure. i think competition's great between both of them you know this will be a good thing for everybody you well, know, I know uh, like bds is uh they got their bronco uh built at sema yeah which is going on right now um and uh they, they made it into like a pickup but it's like a fire engine i saw that thing, right so um, I can guarantee you SEMA is polluted with nothing but Broncos, you know, all customized and stuff. So yeah. it is, it's a great thing for the aftermarket. Um, like Jeep has always been, now there's just a Bronco. Now hopefully maybe like Chevy gets the Blazer out there again. And, yeah. You know, then it would it'd be nice. Right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mentioned last time I was up here, you guys have lifted or what, 
five thousand jeeps. We're figuring about six thousand. Six thousand jeeps. In all the years, um, you can ask him how many lifts we do a week. I mean, sometimes we'll do three, four, five a week. You know? Yeah. And here's the guy doing all those. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. I've probably done hundreds of lifts in my time here, which has been like what seven or eight years. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you think the Bronco is a real deal? Oh yeah, that's yeah. what I see so far. Yeah. Yeah. No reason to think it's not. I'm sure you guys will start seeing them come in here for stuff. We're, we're itching. People are into being able to personalize and customize, you know, and make them your own, which is right. what's what's cool. And the only two vehicles out there right now, you can take the doors and roof off without torches. You know what I mean? So that's, right. <laughs> that's yep. pretty cool. That's right. Yeah. It's gonna be very nice. Well, I appreciate it. I was glad you guys got to check it out. You know way more about the underside of that than I do, and I was glad I stopped to uh, check it out. I'll bring ours up when I get it. Yeah, we're, we're glad you stopped by, Mike. I mean, that's that's the first one we really got a chance to really look at. So yeah. And definitely bring yours when you get it. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, oh. I uh, didn't get back till after dark last night, and I want to get Melissa's take on the new Bronco. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this one is not ours. Our dealer, Barrel Ford and Zilli Nopal, lent this to us until ours comes in. And coincidentally, last night I did get an email saying that ours will be delivered between November 3rd and November 9th. Now, keep in mind, that's the third one of those we got, so we're not holding our breath. But Melissa, what do you think of this Bronco compared to, you know, we've had three Jeeps now. You've only driven it a couple days. What's your honest opinion? Surprisingly, I love it. Yeah, I well, surpri I'm surprised myself. Yeah, so comparing this to the Jeep, I haven't taken this off-roading yet. Sure would love to, but it's more comfortable. The controls are right here to my right, driving, more accessible. There's just what I need, not a huge amount of whatever then I have to figure out and you know that's distracting but there's a nice size screen for uh, old people that are like I can't see guess what you can see just fine with that it's comfortable you get in you're drive you feel like you're driving I've never driven a race car but like you feel like you're driving a luxury sports car yeah the seat kind this of thing takes off I love it and it is comfortable in the seat yeah and i can see really well like all around so i'm in an suv but i feel like i'm seated yeah in a, in a car and uh there's something else oh it, it, it feels solid you know what i mean yeah when you open shut the door there's a different sound when you're in it and you shut the door you feel like you're now soundproof in the jeep not so much there's a ting that's okay. I didn't buy the Jeep for the luxury feeling. I bought the Jeep for the, uh, I like to make it my own. I like to make the modifications we made and for the hopes that uh, we'll be off-roading one day with it. And uh, I did mention earlier in this video, uh, the Bronco, it seemed as though the hardtop had more wind noise than the Jeep. And when I was at Meridian Off-Road, I was talking to Rob and he said that may have something to do with the roof rack on this he knows when he puts okay. like light bars and racks on jeeps for people they mention okay. you know hey it's louder now but i have heard from other people that this hard top is uh loud it's not okay. unbearable or anything like that but okay. it's definitely louder than the jeep uh but all in all uh so far we're impressed with the uh bronco I am. I am. Uh, we look forward to getting ours we've been waiting a very long time and it's going to look way different than the one you see here behind you. We have a wild track four door uh, coming in rapid red, which always kind of like the earth tones in Jeeps, but yeah, yeah we're doing the rapid red. It'll yeah. kind of be almost the same color as our Jeep. Well, similar, right. you know, and it has the Sasquatch package. It'll be lifted a little bit with 35 inch tires, uh, you know, kind of a beefed up suspension and whatnot. But uh, yeah. yeah, so far, so far you know we can't speak obviously on long-term reliability or anything like that right. but the key standouts for me was the uh, 2.3 turbo yeah uh, way more power than than what i expected and uh it's the it's, ride uh, is much better than you, the jeep yeah you're and i keep repeating little... myself but once again independent front suspension versus solid front axle right but, but lots of power comfortable right. ride yeah and i don't want to sound like one of those um you know, jerky critics, but I will say, 
I am super surprised that I didn't want to come off as I'm not going to like it. I know I'm not going to like it. But in the back of my mind, because I've waited this long, I'm like, Mike, I'll find something else I like. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to love it like you think I'm going to love it. Well, just having this one. All right. So I'm going to say I do. I do like it. So if you had any advice to give anyone looking to buy a Bronco, what would it be? You know, that's a great question. Have you ever heard the expression, when's the best time to plant a tree? 30 years ago. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Now. So when's the best time to buy a Ford Bronco? 30 years ago. When's the second best time to buy a Ford Bronco? Now. Yeah, because it's going to take you a while if you want yeah. one. It, it really is. Get so. on it. Get into your Ford dealership. Get on your Ford online. Do it now. Yeah. You'll thank me. And in about two years, you'll see it. If Yeah. If you want a 2024, you better order it now. Right. But when uh, Eva gets back with the Jeep, we'll do a, a wrap up of this video. We'll show you our Jeep, you know, side okay. by side with this Bronco. Now our Jeep, you know, it has a uh, three and a half inch JKS lift and yeah. 35 inch tires. So it stands, but surprisingly it doesn't stand that much taller. Maybe it's the roof rack on that, but I yeah. saw him parked side by right. side last night. So. But even, right, so, even, yeah, so the Jeep sits a little higher. Yeah. You know, you know when you want to awkwardly talk to somebody, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story for now. Yeah. I appreciate your, uh, your, your uh, words there, Melissa. I think. Oh, you're welcome. I always have something to say. So She does. Anyone wants to know, actually, you can go to Morgan's Off the Leash. That's my YouTube channel. I've always got something to share. I just am really not. I don't know how Mike Morgan puts out a video almost every day because it's a lot of work. I can I struggle to put one out once a week. But anyways, go check out Morgan's Off the Leash. There's a lot there for you to love. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so we just parked the uh, Jeep next to the Bronco. And as you can see, the uh, Jeep's got 35 inch tires on it, uh, three and a half inch lift. It does definitely sit a little bit higher. I'll be anxious to see, you know, what it looks like next to the wild track when we get it. Uh, you know, it comes with 35s, but uh, I think both vehicles are good vehicles. So far, I think Melissa and I can both agree. Uh, we have been pleasantly surprised yeah. with the Bronco. Uh, yeah. I, I really do. I think it's, uh, you know, long-term reliability, all that. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, so far, so good, and we're looking forward to getting our new one. The new yeah. Wild Track is called uh, Rapid Red is the color. It'll be similar to what the uh, Jeep is, like similar to it. Well, not yeah, exactly the more, same color, it's but- It's gonna look more red. Yeah, it'll look more red than burgundy. If, if you look, the roof, like this one is taller. Yeah. But also this running board, you can tell yeah. right here. The wild track will be about the same, I think, I as think. the- Okay. Maybe not quite as high as the Jeep. Okay. But anyway, I think that's about it. Once we get uh, our Bronco, we'll probably do you know, a series. These aren't our typical videos, but no, we're going to try to right. give a detailed, you know, honest right. opinions on right. both because these are both very popular vehicles and a lot of people buy them both. You know, they're not for everybody. If you're looking for something with great gas mileage and this isn't, this isn't for you, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> but if you want something uh, that's, I don't know, it just gives you a sense of freedom and you're able to personalize these things and you can take the doors and the roofs right. off and, uh, it's just the only two vehicles out there that you can do that with. So yeah. if you're into that kind of stuff, you know, subscribe to our channel. And over the next uh, several months, you know, we'll do a video every couple weeks. And, and we'll take them both on some trail rides and things and uh, do kind of a long-term review on both of them. But do you want to wrap this video up, Melissa? Yeah, I'd like that. Thanks so much for being here, for watching, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate it. Make sure you give this video a like, share it with others, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.